Sun Kui is called the Chinese piroga. It is made of rice flour, tulip, bamboo shoot, and dried shrimps. This can be eaten as lunch or as snacks. It is the perfect food if you like to make in bulk and store them for later use. Cooking helped me through this really difficult time. Nobody knows when our time will come. And this could also be my last video. Tulips in Sweden looks much different from those in Asia. And this is our main ingredients for the fillings. Tulips, bamboo shoot, which can be found in Asian store, some cooking wine. If you don't have cooking wine, it's fine too. Some light soy sauce, some oyster sauce, some pepper, a bit of sugar, some garlic, and some dried shrimps. And for the flour, you need some salt, some tapioca starch, and some rice flour. I'm going to see if I can regrow this tulip so I cut off the top part. Keep them in a bowl filled with water. I'll probably soak them for a few days until I see the root. Now let's peel the tulips. There are different types of bamboo shoot in stripes, in strips, or in chunk. I prefer to buy this in chunk so that I can use a food processor to cut them later. I was too lazy to chop the shrimp, so I decided to use a food processor to do that. But of course, if you are more hardworking than me, you can always use a knife to just run down and chop them finely. Dry shrimps are really expensive in Sweden, so I'm not using a lot, just enough for the taste only. Next, I'm going to chop my bamboo shoot. I don't want to chop them too finely because I want to still feel the chunk when I'm eating the sun kui. You do the same with tulips. You chop them into bigger chunk and cut them. Make sure you don't cut them too fine. And if you put too much at once, you start to notice there are chunks that are not cut properly. So try not to put too much. Like for this instant, this is a little bit too much. So you will see, you can find big chunks that are uncut. You want to avoid this. And how do you do that? Don't put too much in one go. As I mentioned earlier in my vlog, we all make mistakes and it is perfectly okay. The most important thing is you learn from your mistakes and don't do it again. Remember, we are all human beings. Mistakes make us more human. And that is how we learn as a human being. So, don't be afraid to make mistakes. It is only
Let the steam and heat cook this for another 10 minutes. Now, I think this is done. Put it aside and let it cool. You notice there is some stalks left on the bottom of the pan. And this is my way of removing the extra stalks. Prepare the pans for steaming with a parchment paper. By using a weighing scale, I measured the rice flour and the tapioca starch accordingly. I'm making double portion, so you probably notice that how come my flour is much more than those stated in my recipes. Now add some cooking oil, salt and hot water. The hot water will partially cook the flour. So, make sure the water is piping hot. It's safer to use a spoon when doing this. I prefer to use the rice spoon because it is flat and the dough can be pressed using the back of the spoon. Now, you want to let this dough rest for at least 20 minutes before you use it. Cover them and set it aside. Now, let's make the sweet black soy sauce. In a bowl, I add some sugar and some dark soy sauce and dilute it with a little bit of water. Then, you want to microwave it for 30 seconds. If the sugar is still not melt, you take it out, stir it and put it back until everything is melt. Now, I'm going to divide the dough into two and keep the other half for later use. I later label the dough with dates so that I know when it was made and what kind of dough it is. Now, this is ready for freezing. On a countertop, put up some rice flour and roll out the dough. Divide the dough into equal portions. Here, I have about 8 portions. Roll out the dough in a round form and put a generous amount of fillings. I notice the dough is very soft. It can be quite difficult to handle. So, you want to be quite gentle. Another thing I notice is it's much easier to use a hand to roll out the dough instead of using a rolling pin. Don't worry about the ugly edges. Simply use a knife to just push it inwards so it looks much nicer and neater. If you have a round giant cookie cutter, that might work too. But I find this way is much easier. Now, you want to steam this for at least 10 to 15 minutes. In time, I'm going to pack my fillings. I made far too much and this will be good for later use. I'm going to freeze it and this can also be eaten as a side dish too. Okay, after 15 minutes, this is done. Let's plate it. This will be our lunch today. Almost meatless, healthy and cheap lunch. And this is how I eat them. In fact, there are two different ways of eating them. This is one of the way. This is the first time LG is eating this and I wonder what he would think. He's a meat person and I can understand eating vegetarian food can be a bit difficult especially for most men. Agree? Later, I asked him, how was it? And he said, wow, it was actually quite nice. And he asked me later, are you sure there are no meat in this dish? If you want to train somebody to eat vegetarian food, this is one of the way. Okay, I mentioned earlier on, you, there's two ways to eat this. Another way is to fry them on a pan with a little bit of oil. I know, many of you would prefer this. This one look much more appetizing, right? In fact, it is not only looking appetizing, it tastes much better too. 
the skin is crispy, the sauce is slightly sweet, and the sriracha chili is tangling. It's perfect for lunch. Hey, let me know what you think about this. Do you prefer to fry them or do you prefer to eat them just steam? In my next video, I'm going to show you one of my dinner idea. If you are new here, please subscribe with the notification bell on so you get notified when I upload a new video. I hope you like and share this video and don't forget to check out my other video too. Please guys, stay at home, be safe and I hope I will be alive to make my next new video. Hope to see you. Bye bye.